Caltech's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the oldest continuous rocket and missile activity in the Western world, was the first in the field with a guided ballistic missile. From the first firings of missiles in the area that was to become the Edwards Air Force Base range, to the first firings at the White Sands Missile Range, to the first firings at Cape Canaveral, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's successes in the field of ballistic missiles led the way for other, even more ambitious projects. Atlas, Titan, Polaris exceeded expectations. The Corporal, when declared operational by the Army, showed performance capabilities well beyond the anticipated. The sergeant, system engineered from the first, has shown equal promise. Because it is system engineered, the sergeant is simple to operate and maintain. A small crew with average skills can fire it. The sergeant is rugged. It need not be coddled. The sergeant is reliable and will operate in boiling heat or biting cold. All sergeant vehicles are air transportable and can roll anywhere. To assure that these design goals would be met, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory team, already the most experienced in the country, working with 50-odd government activities and agencies, drove relentlessly through each 40-hour week on an around-the-clock schedule. The help wanted call went out to engineers and skilled personnel. From all over America, dedicated scientists and skilled technicians answered the call. New faces began to appear as mass interviews became the order of the day. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory began to grow. New buildings began to spring up faster and faster but never enough to meet the demands of the mushrooming staff. The team's closely coordinated efforts soon bore fruit. firing was more successful than the one preceding. And as the program rolled along, all firing schedules were met. As might be expected, some military characteristics proved a bit difficult to achieve. But slight revisions to the MCs neatly solved the problem. All members of the JPL sergeant team, because of the thoroughness of the documentation effort, were immediately aware of any design revisions affecting system compatibility. A few areas offered problems, but these were easily cleared away by a few conferences. A co-contractor was selected by carefully screening the country's industrial giants. A plant capable of extensive production was the prime consideration. 
Progress in the final year of the development program by JPL was outstanding. Final planning, phasing in the production models, rescheduling round 30, injecting some last minute changes to the system by Army request, and environmental testing rounded out the development schedule. Major features of the sergeant system integration concept were considered by the Army throughout the life of the program. The modular assembly replacement scheme, workable and thoroughly integrated, would certainly be used. Of course, some piece part replacements in the using unit would be anticipated. Standard Army vehicles would be used to transport missile sections in a move wisely considered by the experienced officers in Washington. The sergeant would indeed be the best integrated, most advanced of the Army missiles since the Congreve rocket. the system's usability in the final analysis is a series of successful operational firings by the military. We can say that the sergeant is a success. From speedy field operations that rolled under the watchful eyes of JPL tech reps to static firings and through flight tests, the sergeant has delivered the goods. Dr. Pickering, director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, recently addressed a meeting of sergeant engineers. This work is required in preparation for the time when man himself will be engaged in the supreme adventure of exploring the moon, planets, and eventually even outer space itself. <laughs>